Welcome back to Gunsmoke, a Spire RPG actual play from the House of Bob. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm playing Istrin Malel, the spider descendant midwife. I'm Dan. I'll be playing Hugo Verite, the Vermissian sage. I'm Alex, and I'll be playing Geroth, the cannibalistic carrion priest. I'm Christina, and I'm playing Leon LaCroix, bartender by night, night by day. And I'm Jake, your game master. If you like what you hear and want to support the show, please visit us at patreon.com slash the house of Bob. Last session, you swung by Saunders Church to collect the absolutionist and prepare for your trip back to Endline to stop Councilman Dren's schemes. To allow Saunders to approach undetected without being targeted again, you cast the false death spell you learned from the old Charnalite, which worked perfectly with absolutely no side effects. Right. <laughs> Subsequently, you returned to Endline, making your way through the massive scrap heap before encountering a group of last train worshipping Kerberites, whom you skillfully avoided conflict with. Not only that, but you made a friend. Pieces. The friendly gutterkin who gave you some information about the big mound and the mean people coming and going from it. You excused yourself from the train and leapt off, followed shortly by Pieces, who had become enamored by Leon's kind treatment. Okay. Pieces! Pieces leaps off the train and immediately face plants. Oh. <laughs> knocking up a cloud of soot from his filthy clothes. Yeah, I imagine he's just always doing that, like <laughs> like pig pen, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He pulls himself to his feet, but his legs are all wobbly and he stumbles in your direction as if he's never had to walk like of his own volition before. Oh. And he says, wait, w- wait for pieces. Take pieces with you. We take pieces with <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no no question. You, you don't strike him down? No. Oh, I okay. put him on my shoulders. <laughs> Aw. So you've got... <laughs> I got two people yeah. on my back. Yes. <laughs> you've got Saunders and a little baby Bjorn, reverse baby Bjorn behind you, yes. and giving a piggyback <laughs> ride to Saunders. Let's go, Pieces. I hope you're ready for adventure. <laughs> In previous life, Pieces was powerful mage. Oh, shit. And what about this life? Is, is that still something you can tap into? <laughs> <laughs> uh, pieces out of practice. Well... <laughs> Start practicing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just think about it while we're we're walking over to this to the mound. Sure. He starts concentrating real hard Aww. on like trying to levitate passing rocks and stuff like that. That's adorable. I can't see any of it, but I can imagine. <laughs> okay, cool. You continue in the general direction of the big mound as uh pieces described it last time, where you guys know that whatever schemes Drin is up to, the place where the magic is originating from uh, is this, uh, again, kind of big scrap heap mound on the far side of Endline, and you continue your way towards it. On your way there, Jaroff, you mm-hmm. see Present. you... Yeah, uh, a <laughs> couple of the little... A uh, couple of your little crow friends that you had summoned earlier. Most of them had kind of dissipated by now, but there's kind of one or two still hanging around, you know, hopping from pole to pole as you guys are m- marching your way forward. And you see a couple of them... Mm-hmm. They start flapping towards and kind of buzzing by Sonder on Leon's back. Oh. <laughs> it's probably I'm fine. Sure for a good reason. <laughs> and like what one of them lands uh, now on, <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of room on Leon's shoulders. No, but has to land on Pieces' head. Yeah, what <laughs> lands on, uh, yeah, on Pieces' like outstretched arm. The crow kind of starts pecking at Sonder a little bit, letting out an occasional caw. That's rude. I <laughs> caw back at it. Uh, <laughs> that's rude. I'm, I do my little croaky talk. <laughs> he's Saunders. A good, I mean, he's maybe a good guy. <laughs> he's an he's our guy. guy. Yeah. You know, don't be rude and peck and at him. He's definitely still alive. Uh huh. You got. You guys did perfect magic. I assume. <laughs> <laughs> the crow kind of gives you a little like snark. He like caws back at you, <laughs> but then flutters off. Fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> There's one in every group. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. Okay. As you come around the corner on another scrap mound, it kind of opens up a little bit into a kind of flatter area in the center of which is the big mound. You see a immense mass of scrap trains and bits of rail and deconstructed stations and coal bins and various train ephemera. I don't know if that's the right word, but... <laughs> Bits and bobs. Bits and bobs, yeah, exactly. 
it doesn't seem like it should be standing. Like it's all very awkward angles and, you know, uh, uh, big heaps that are coming off in strange directions and seems like it should fall apart at a stiff breeze, but somehow it's standing. And you see a few things here. You see kind of behind, there's like one train car sticking out of the bottom of the mound, kind of around the corner. And you see two knights clad in this, you know, the kind of quarter plate armor that the knights are known for. Leon recognizes the silver star emblem on the shoulder pad, and they are hanging out by this little train car. And you go, you see, watching from a nearby heap of metal is Paige, Mm -hmm. the Vermissian guardian that you are familiar with. Yeah. Who you knew had kind of gone ahead to try to scout out the area and figure out what's going on. I don't think we've really described Paige or anything yet, so I don't know if you want to give us a quick idea of who this person is. We've talked to her briefly. Yeah, it was pretty like uh, two ships passing in the night. Brief, yeah. It's kind of like Brienne from uh, Game of Thrones. Right. You know, big, big hulking woman, you know, short cropped hair, tons of muscle, kind of stoic looking. Shock of like shaved head kind of thing. Shock of a shaved head. Yep, shock of a shaved head. (laughs) (laughs) Shocking. Okay, it is shocking. That's all. Yeah. She is a, a Vermissian, or sorry, a vault guardian, I think is the terminology, which it's pretty undefined what that actually means, but someone aligned with the Vermissian sages and maybe, you know, provides escort to them as they make their way through the Vermissian, the more dangerous parts of it. Mm-hmm. She carefully and surprisingly, deftly and quietly for someone that size makes her way down the mound and starts heading towards you and Kind of at first eye is the baggage, so to speak. You've got an unconscious man <laughs> and a gutterkin hanging out. It's a Vermissian baby. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely just unconscious. Yeah, she knows what's happening. <laughs> Doesn't seem too fussed about it. Like you say, it's the Vermissian. But says, ah, you, you, you made it. What's the plan here? Uh, that's a good question. What have you seen so far? Got a little bit of this info from pieces already, but there's probably about 10 knights that are kind of operating in the area as well as a handful of the retro engineers. She goes into a little more detail on the retro engineers that they are equipped with some strange weaponry that she hasn't seen before. Some like rifles that are covered in cables and tanks of blue goo and little like Tesla coil looking things and that kind of stuff. She hasn't wanted to quite test what those are capable of quite yet. She also says that periodically the area starts to shake Like there's a little earthquake centralized right around the mound and there are big plumes and swirls of dust and moths and bits of rust that swirl around the mound when it's going off. Hmm. Well, it sounds like we got this. (laughs) Yeah, this seems like there's a lot more of them than there are of us. So the mound, are the like retro engineers and the like absolutionists who've been taken over or whatever, are they like on top of the mound or are they coming like in and out of it the knights are kind of the paid security for this area the or for this uh operation the retro engineers are probably councilman drin's kind of minions you know that he kind of runs part of the engineering guild and also obviously they have an affinity for machines and that kind of thing and it seems like some of those are involved in this process which is what you've heard from sonder and as far as you can tell, they are inside of the map. They're inside of it. Okay. Or under it or whatever. Yeah. There's something, yeah, inside of it. Exactly. Can we see entrances or? Yeah, I do have a mastery on exits and entrances. Mm-hmm. You saw when you guys first arrived, there were a couple knights hanging out by like a train car that's kind of sticking out of the mount. And it looks like that's probably an entrance. But yes, between pieces and pages scouting out of the area, you also know, yeah, that there are a couple other entrances that you could probably find. They're not like obvious entrances that they're mm-hmm. either like hidden or they're just like some scrap metal that fell down and now there's a entrance, right? So so we can tell there's a machine on the inside or that's what we're guessing from like what what's going on. Yeah, that's like one of the inf- pieces of information that Sondra had given you that like as he understands that there's some kind of machine that harvests the magical capabilities of the people that are put inside it. And then amplify it. And that's what's kind of spreading the spell throughout uh, Red Room. Uh Uh-huh. So I guess my question (laughs) to Hugo is that how well do bombs work in the (laughs) Vermissian? 
Agus bombs, I guess, in this I mean, particular case. To be fair, I've never set off a bomb in the Hermitian before. I generally like to keep things intact here. Everything's pretty unstable. Everything with- is not intact here. I'll just point that out to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to keep things intact, like, if as, you can. as much as I can. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, obviously, everything's very uh, unstable, so. Sure, I get that, but, like, these guys are evil, and we want to blow up their probably evil machine? Yeah. I don't know. Like, That's just my first suggestion. I mean, I'm open. Yeah, I've only used one of these things before, so maybe, I don't know. I'm willing to try. I, yeah, let's blow shit up. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you really turned on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> I whip out my haggises. Yeah. I just mean, we're just going to make a new, different heap at the Remissian. It doesn't seem that <laughs> crazy. That's, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't really venture to this part, so. Yeah. So, fuck them. The retro engineers are like bad dudes, right? They're the ones who were trying to close off entrances and stuff. Yeah, they're the ones closing up all your shit. Yeah, totally. So fuck them. But you think there's a way to cause like an avalanche of some sort? Yeah, maybe. But the only reason I'm a little bit hesitant on that particular part of it is just because it's somehow staying together when it shouldn't anyway. There's also hostages inside the absolutionists. Yes, right. Yeah, so I think blowing up might be the exit route instead of the entrance. Right, yes, that kind of... Set it off as we go. Yeah, you know, walk away from a cool explosion kind of thing. Of course, <laughs> with Saunders on my back. Yeah. Totally fine. <laughs> well, he doesn't have to stay unconscious the whole time. That's true. <laughs> we just got to get him in, right? And then yeah. we can maybe... Well, we need to blow up the machine because those are the ones making them all hypnotize, isn't it? We don't know. Cause Let's it... not let Jake talk at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, that's fine. We could maybe do a Wookiee prisoner situation. <laughs> oh. If we if we take out one of those guards. What's a Wookiee? <laughs> oh, I, it's from these ancient texts. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for it did Missy. happen a long, long time ago. Yeah, right, it right. was in a <laughs> More Missy and shit, I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you wouldn't understand. The idea was that if they saw Sonder coming, you know, they might be able to cast on him, right? And they obviously have some way of divining his presence. But at this point, you could wake him up and he can participate. They need time to cast the spell on him again or whatever. Right? So that's so. how they got him. It was because they sensed him before. Yeah. It's it's not like an aura or anything. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we could just carry him right in unconscious. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking maybe we carry him in and then... Yeah, we're like, we got another. Throw him on the pile. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, we definitely assume you have. <laughs> Could I uh, cast Web of the Mistress? Please. You sure Strands can. of silver magic extend from your fingertips and you sense the vibrations caused by any intruders. I got a 10. Whoa. I succeeded at a thing. And you maybe didn't hurt yourself too much by doing it. <laughs> no Which hurting. is good. Uh, on a success, you gain immediate awareness of everything in the vicinity, an area about the size of a large building. Even if you can't see or hear it directly, this remains in effect until you move or are moved. More than a step away from your current position. Okay, cool, yeah. You can see, like, the kind of magic webs extending out from you, and you can feel vibrations along the strings of various beings in the area. You can sense kind of the presence of, you know, about 18 or so beings inside the mound. You know, in more detail, you saw the two that are standing right outside, and you see also that there is a a smaller third one just inside of that train carp. So there's three of them in that little area. And you also sense something that is not like you can tell when like living beings with this spell, you can sense three large objects that are not alive, Mm -hmm. um, but they are putting out some really distinct vibrations and kind of a magical energy amongst some kind of flesh baby or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Horrifying, whatever it is, I'm sure. (laughs) <laughs> All I know is that does not sound good to me, but... Let's not go there yet. <laughs> Some days you just got to face your fears, right? It's just the way it is. Uh, any chance I can sense any other entrances or, like, size of the area that we're going to? Exits and entrances, you guys are kind of covered between the okay. page and pieces. I think it's kind of a little hard to tell because, you know, space doesn't work in the way you're used to here. Okay. I think you can tell it's pretty big inside. 
because you can probably sense that kind of the hollowness inside of the mound, right? So there is a lot of empty space inside the mound with which to do activities. Sure. I mean, the all <laughs> important activities. Yes. Uh, okay, just it's a big area. It's, it's yeah. fine. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, okay. So wh- how do we want to proceed then? We're going to s- beat this little one up probably. <laughs> Are there three? Well, yeah, the little so, one's kind of past the other two, so it'd be tricky. Okay. Yeah, there's two outside, there's one inside. You got it, yeah. So, and sneak in? I feel like they'll they'll definitely alert somebody once we start fighting them. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. We need a single one. Mm-hmm. Or we just find our way in somewhere else. Can your birds do a little recon for another entrance? Maybe. Jake, would I need to roll again to summon my crows or what would... Yeah, yeah, roll again. Okay. How are you on stress? Because is it worth it? Not so hot. Because <laughs> you're okay. going to take stress automatically by doing it. Okay. Yeah. I'm at five stress and I've filled basically all of my free slots on my other resistances. So, well, should we maybe have pieces earn his keep? <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet. Well, that's, yeah, he hasn't done that's anything. That's the problem, right? But I mean, like, he, to yeah. be er- needing to earn anything. <laughs> um, I like your... What Wookie idea? Wookie. Yeah, I believe it's pronounced Wookie. 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 Okay. Emphasis. Emphasis. I don't. On the I key. don't. It doesn't Wookie. sound different to me. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let Let's bring Saunders awake. I guess let's wake him up. We should wake him up for this. If we're I okay. Mean, well, if yeah. we wake him up, they'll be alerted to his presence. Yeah, but we we're gonna bring him forward anyway, so they're gonna find it, out. It's as far as you know, it's something that has to actively be done, right? It's not like they just have a a beacon you know, going a be- aura. Uh, yeah, an aura of detect and kill Sonder. Like they, <laughs> it, it, this, is a, this is a spell that is being cast on someone, right? So it's I not see. like okay. when they wake up, they're not immediately gonna go, Oh, there's Sonder, let's get him. Okay. You know, but if they see him, then they could start casting the spell again, but it's not gotcha. like an immediate thing. Right. And yeah. But we're going to make them see him anyway if we're going to be like, we, hey, guys, we got him. Well, we still need one of those white cloaks or something. I think they'd be thrown off by just seeing like some random ass people bringing Sonder to them. So we need to like draw one of these white cloaks mm-hmm. away. And I guess that's mm-hmm. what it comes down to. And beat them up where they're not going to alert other people. There's no white cloaks here. The knights, I think you mean. The knights. Yes. The guards. <laughs> Do we think that we're going to end up having to fight all these people one way or the other? I'm hoping no. Because <laughs> my my hope is that we can get in and blow well, up that machine. Yeah, I, I'm just, I feel like if we are going to have to fight them in the train car is an excellent place to tra- fight them because they won't be able to use their numbers as an advantage against us. So you want to like lure them all out. Like, we get in the train car and they come at us in the train car. They can only come at us one or two at a time at that point. Right. Okay. I I figure if we cause some sort of ruckus out here, those two at the front are going to be the ones that come out to investigate, right? The other Mm -hmm. one will stay back to guard the entrance. Right. So, I can make one of those guys just disappear. Whoa. Right. Right. I can drop them into the Vermissian in some other random spot. Okay, yes. So, you scared me there for a second, Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give you the eye. <laughs> Don't cross me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the way to do it. That's a good plan. We do that, yeah. and then we just gang up on the other single. And then take his stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Does that sound like a plan? What mm-hmm. what what are the knights wearing? Are they wearing like helmets or are they Yeah, they're wearing quarter plate armor. You see one of them has a morning star at the side and the other one Perfect. has a sword. And it's kind of like a chain and leather and then this like quarter plate armor over top of it. Uh-huh. Would that include a helmet? Um I don't think at least at this moment they are not wearing helmets. Okay. I was trying to figure out if we could put people yeah, in disguise. It disguise. Um, leave the guy with the, I mean, he's going to hurt us pretty bad, but at the very least, it's going to be easier to pretend to be the guy with the morning star because I too have a morning star, <laughs> but he, he will hit us pretty hard. That's the only thing to think about there. Well, you hit him hard and you hit him first. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to put down these two guys. <laughs> <first>. <laughs> so okay. I put down Saunders and I put down uh, pieces and I say pieces, you make sure you stay safe. Yeah, you had. 
Yes. <laughs> Do we want Saunders awake to help at this point if they're probably not going to be able to hurt yeah. him? Yeah, yeah, we can bring so. Saunders. Yeah, then wake him up. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's wake up Saunders. <laughs> Yeah, okay. How do we bring him back? Did we read the instructions on that before we... You two were the ones that were there. Yeah, why are you asking us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think, like, you are kind of ending the spell early, so I think it's, you know, some magical focus and concentration to uh, break the spell. So let's let's do, like, fix a cult. I got a question just sure. before you go. Can't you tell if somebody's dead? <laughs> I mean, he's supposed to look dead, though. That's the point of the spell. We made him dead. And we're bringing him I back. I know, but like like that his soul is not there or not. Uh, they don't go away unless I eat them. And I haven't eaten them. So. Okay. Perfect, then. I can see no problem with this plan. <laughs> Complete logic. Totally fine. Yeah, we don't see any nibble marks or anything. Just from the bird. Yeah, a couple of peck marks. <laughs> from- <laughs> and yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he looks very pale, like uh, dead or very close to dead body would look. You see probably a couple of little uh, creepy crawlies that are starting to make their way up and down his body. Ooh. But as far as you know, this is exactly how it's supposed to yeah, work. Yeah, I mean, as for, uh, okay. everything that, uh, you know, Jeroth just told me sounds like it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> I get over close to Saunders and I lay a couple hands on him and I say, come on back now. Come on and, back now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I rolled a six. Okay. Hmm. Well, six is success at a cost. Okay, still. But it's combined with an earlier failure in terms of casting this spell. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> I didn't suggest what? this at all. <laughs> Alex, do you remember, I don't remember if this was on air or if it was during session zero. Do you remember one of the reasons why the drow like to consume the dead? Um, it's to send their souls to drow heaven, which is on the moon. That's part of it for sure. Part of the reason why they like the consuming the souls or consuming the bodies as opposed to other like burying. Yeah. It's because there's an old drow superstition that if you leave a dead body for too long, the ghost starts to go off and the smell of an off ghost attracts demons. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) This place seems like a place that would have demons. I'm just saying. So did we make a demon? It's probably fine. Wait, did we bring a demon into Sonder? Or is there like (laughs) demons around Sonder? Sonder's eyes jolt open and they are blood, blood red. Oh, boy. And immediately there is a, for just a fraction of a second, the area around him is not the Vermissian, but instead a hellish plane beyond this one. Well, it sounds like the Vermissian to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it kind of sucks because like if the Vermissian is bad, you know, this is the next level. Oh, God. <laughs> the ground around him turns to roiling flesh and there is oh. a rain of like black ichor that burns the skin Great. as it lands. Um, it's only for a split second, but for that split second, you get a glimpse into the demonic plane. And I'm going to need everybody here to roll a resist a cult. Oh. And that includes the uh, guards there. Damn. That's a nine for Jeroth. Ooh, a nine. Ugh. Nine for Istrin. Oh my god. Bring it home, Dan. A four and a five. That equals nine. nine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it should count. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounded like it was just you that failed. And he takes five mind stress as he Ooh. glimpses the realm beyond. Well, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> Amazingly, pieces passes. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. But, oh, good. Uh, I told him to stay safe. One of the guards passes. Um, the other one does not. And you see blood start to pour from his eyes and nose and mouth. And he screams and falls to the ground. Oh, my gosh. Clawing at his face and writhing around on the ground. So I'll have to roll a fallout for me, I assume. I'm at stress level six. Well, let's find out. Yep. Moderate fallout. See how bad this is. I'm not sure I want to. I mean, I could use martyr. Let's see how bad it is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I didn't know hell existed until now, but there you go. (laughs) 
cool to have proof, I guess. I think your reaction <laughs> definitely lines up with the fallout phobia. <laughs> you acquire a phobia of something related to the stress you suffered. Cool, I have a healthy fear of hell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you will avoid the subject of your phobia whenever possible, and if you have to interact with it, difficulties are increased by one. Okay. Yeah, you're taking that one. I'm, I, I'm not worried about, like... I don't know how much we're going to run into hell issues, so... Yeah. I'm just going to let you have that one. So, what's Saunders doing now? <laughs> just out of curiosity. Um, yeah, he bolts upright, and he's desperately looking around and trying to catch his breath and get a hold of his surroundings and everything. And he sees you guys, and you can see the kind of processing in a moment as he tries to remember what was going on. <gasps> Hello. And he says, I, I met someone. No, oh, don't say that. Oh. <laughs> Are you running away together? <laughs> <laughs> he, he said he could help us. Oh, I'm going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we kind of saw where you were hanging out, and we don't want anything to do with that. I, I described uh, last time when you picked him up that Sonder had a string of fetishes mm-hmm. and like little shrunken heads and that kind of thing. Right. And you see one of the shrunken heads, uh, its mouth begins to move as oh, if it's talking. God. Oh, what the fuck? No sound comes out, but Sonder kind of looks as if he is listening to the um, shrunken head speak. And he says, yes, I know. I'll, I'll tell them. I'll tell them. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, he can, he, he, he can help us. He can help us take these guys out and free my friends. Can I tear um... that off his thing and just hurl it as far as I can. <laughs> oh, you can certainly try. You're a phobia, a phobia of it, though. That's true. Maybe. Yeah, I'll just keep my distance. <laughs> What's our friend's name here? Just out of curiosity there, Saunders. He uh, converses with the shrunken head again and then says he, he calls himself the Sentinel, the Lord of Watchtowers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, none of us have anything to say to that. Nope. Uh, you do realize that's a demon, right? We saw hell when you came back. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up, that's a demon, my bro. And what does he want in return? Just again, out of curiosity, for helping us. He converses with the shrunken head a bit more, goes back and forth a bit. <laughs> like a wheeling and dealing. Don't care for this at all. You know, he's kind of like whispering to the head so that you guys can't necessarily hear what he's saying. And then he looks back up with a kind of frenzied look and he says, he's been trapped for so long. He just wants, mm-hmm. he just wants the opportunity to get these people out of his domain and then we can move on. I, I don't see how we can do this without him at this point. I mean, you don't even know what's going on, so... <laughs> yeah, you haven't even looked. Oh, I saw so much. <laughs> <laughs> you see so much when you're dead for a bit. Oh, God. <laughs> just, just put him under again. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we might as well just kill him this time. <laughs> right? It might be for the best. No, but I mean, that didn't answer my question, I should say, Saunders. <laughs> <laughs> but what does he actually want in return? Not, uh, he wants to help us, sure, but he wants something else. They always want something else. The shrunken head starts to like clatter its teeth, and you can hear like the clattering noise. Mm-hmm. Sounds friendly. Yeah, you see from one of the scrap heaps beside you, you see it begin to kind of rumble a little bit, and it kind of reforms, it collects, and turns into a small little tower. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and the door of the tower swings open and you see a variety of weapons and armor and equipment. This guy's trying to buy us off <laughs> without telling us anything. <laughs> yep, bribery. Saunders stands up and starts walking towards the tower. Oh my God, I grab him right by the shoulders. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on, hold on, good friend. I mean, you just woke up. You're pretty tired, I'm sure. Yeah. Have you ever heard the saying, don't make a deal with the devil? These aren't devils. They're demons. It's fine. Though. It's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my bad. My bad. I should interrupt at this point. There is the two guards were affected by I know, this, this partial <laughs> incursion uh, of the demonic plane as well. And one's dead, isn't he? One like, was, yes, is now dead. He was... Oh, we've been fighting. Yeah, basically. And the other one, <laughs> he had fallen to the ground and was clawing at his face as blood was coming out of every orifice. I mean, I just have to assume they, they figured this is from the Vermissian <laughs> somehow. Right? It's normal? His cohort was shaking him and trying to uh, get him to calm down, but he has passed away in his arms. Aww. And 
gosh, what do they even do? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what we're trying to figure out. So good luck, them. <laughs> I think he opens the like train car door and starts dragging Fuck. the uh, dead body inside. All right. Sure. Hey, no, I- this might work out because then there should just be the one left. The, the little guy? One. Yeah, that we can. We he's can take. the resistance guy. <laughs> yeah, he's the. All right. He's going to be the sole one watching. So we can just. Maybe we'll, we should try to sneak up to the door now. Saunders is trying to pull free from you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're stronger than him for sure. <laughs> Saunders, no. Don't take it. I've got my death grip on him, but this is going to hinder me quite a bit. I can't <laughs> hold on to him forever. Uh huh. Yeah. Saunders, like, look, that's a masterpiece. <laughs> Plus one mace. Oh, plus one. <laughs> Whoa. Dude, I bought a way better one earlier. Cool. Is it worth your soul being banished to hell? <laughs> and is it even going to be his soul? That's my main question. <laughs> is he did not say that it wasn't us that he's paying off with. <sighs> Saunders, listen to me. <laughs> Think about your friends. Yeah. <laughs> We barely know you. <laughs> and we're not selling our souls for you. So you got to get over that shit. I, I don't care what you do. I'm here to rescue my friends. And he starts struggling harder. Um, oh you start God. to feel the kind of entropic magic uh-huh. uh, start to uh-huh. yeah, kind of eat away at your outer skin a little bit. Oh my God, I'm going to have to suplex this guy again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Okay, real quick. Let, let's let's meta for a quick second. What are we doing here and what are we going to do? <laughs> so I'm just going to put this out there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What's the worst thing that could happen <laughs> if <laughs> we make a deal with a demon? If we make a deal with a demon. I mean, you tell me. That seems like a totally against your own religion. <laughs> I'm just. I mean, do, do we have to make a deal? Couldn't we just let Saunders kind of do his thing down here? And then maybe later we accidentally stab him a bunch. Yeah, I don't really care what happens to him after. <laughs> We just watch it all happen. You know, we could use the help. Hey, he's a he's a free man. Let him do what he wants. I mean, he's a free man who's been brainwashed by a demon because we killed him. <laughs> well, he knew the risks. No, he didn't. <laughs> he probably didn't know that part. <laughs> he definitely did not. <laughs> he signed up not knowing the risks. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. So basically our options the way I see it, are kill him now Uh Uh yeah, or kill him later. (laughs) Yeah. So if we kill him later, later. yeah, I guess we're going to use what we're going to have happen is have him help us or have him help himself while we stand back. (laughs) Let's set the demons of chaos on our enemies. Yeah, we'll just happen to be in the vicinity. Okay. Pieces thing, kill him now. Well, <laughs> pieces, you don't get a vote yet. Pieces not like demons. <laughs> pieces got a point, <laughs> but pieces is not in the meta conversation. <laughs> no, <whoops. laughs> pieces, sorry, pieces, sorry. <laughs> pieces, are you kind of quick with your hands? Do you think you can get that little head away from him? Mm. <laughs> pieces looks at his like reptilian hands caked in soot and, you know, uh, wrinkled with the labor, uh, hard labor that he's done, ca- hard and calloused. And Pieces says, Pieces will try for new friends. Oh, he's going to okay. get Aww. killed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're singing our two NPCs after each other. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> you two, fight to the death. <laughs> All right. I let Saunders go. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm not part of your agreement. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I, I do a I do a quick little huddle with the the four of us. Let's just tackle him to the ground, get rid of that head right now, and see what happens. Okay, we better okay. get it before he walks into that sentinel. Thing. Yeah, so I won't do the tackling, but I'll let one of you big strong folks do the tackling. Oh, okay. You should have said something before I let him go. <laughs> <laughs> so pieces is going to try to do it right. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay. I fucking bum rush this guy <laughs> while he's looking away at, towards the uh, tower that just appeared out of nowhere. So everything's cool and fine. <laughs> Definitely okay. It's a Vermissian baby. <laughs> <laughs> I sound less sure of it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should be, yeah. Uh, Sure. Saunders starts kind of desperately um, 
rushing towards the tower and the uh, riches promised within. And you, you're trying to tackle him to the ground so that pieces can grab the... Yeah. Okay, sure. Let, we'll have pieces assist you then. So you get mastery. And you're fighting a cult. Oh no, I got a six. <laughs> Success at a cost. Mm-hmm. Can I... Whatever you're gonna make me pay with, <laughs> do the do you know who I am? What's that? That's the one where I can use uh, I can use a reputation slot instead of whatever you're gonna say, oh, which right. is gonna be bad. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, yes, that's how the ability works. But how flavor wise, how do we describe you taking reputation damage here instead? Um, that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how the ability works. Figure it out, GM. You figure it out. <laughs> um, well, uh, Leon is disintegrated. Um, you know who I, am. Ow. <laughs> I feel like maybe that that demon is gonna. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that you have lost reputation with the demon community. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I care about that so much. No, Aww. no, maybe he he whispers something weird and that goes out into the community. Demonic brand or something? Yeah. Like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, well, let's see how much stress we're talking about here first, actually. Yeah. I just feel like it's going to be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You're tackling a person with a demon inside them. I don't know why you think that. Mm. It's four stress. Yeah. Oh, okay. So two reputation. I have two reputation slots. And let's see, yeah, if you're taking Fallout. All right, don't I, uh, wouldn't I decrease my yes. stress after yeah, I do? Yeah, you do heal after you take Fallout. How much? Um, it was medium, right? Yeah, moderate stress order. Uh, so you heal five. Oh, nice. Hooray! Oh, you're not talking to me. Well, nope. you, you are also healing five, because oh. you were also taking moderate Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So what does that mean in this case? Well, yeah, I mean, it probably would have been blood or mind or something, but you put it to reputation instead. Right. And then you'll take a fallout, which we will decide on in a moment here. Okay. Maybe I do just get like a weird brand. Yeah, I think that's probably what it's going to be. I grab him and my hands start burning in the tackle. And the next thing I know, I look at my hands and they've got like, I don't know, what what would demons in this world have? Probably not pentagrams or anything like that. Wieners. Oh, yeah, no, I guess that's <laughs> it. <laughs> on my hand. Just says balls on your forehead. And he starts laughing, the demon. <laughs> <laughs> just draws a dick on your forehead. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dick butt. And I'm like, I don't even know what this is. I still think you'd take damage to reputation. <laughs> yeah, that's happening. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's why. It's yeah, I, de- I definitely think less of you. <laughs> this is your horrible plan, but thank you. <laughs> I literally was holding on to him, and you guys were like, let's let him go. And let I'm like, go, okay, let, let him go. go. <laughs> now don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you settle on how this demonic brand manifests? I mean, I definitely think it's on my hands. Okay. Because I'm a, a very tactile guy. So sure. people are going to see that. Maybe it's the top of the hand so it's like harder to hide than on my palms or something. Sure. Or it's like a really embarrassing knuckle tattoo. And <laughs> yeah, what's it say across your knuckles? Demon across the knuckles there. D-E-M-O-N. No, no, it doesn't what's fit. the actual name of this demon? Uh, the Sentinel. Maybe that's what it says. I'm just branded his little bitch. <laughs> Um, sure. Let, let, let's start with that and we'll see. I feel like that's the kind of thing that could change or grow over time. Oh, good. <laughs> like a little power on your hand. Yeah, actually, I like... But uh, it looks kind of like a penis. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much the penis part, but I do like, yeah, just a little, like, <laughs> tower symbol that certain people would recognize and know what it means. But the actual, like... Mechanical effect is when you need someone to trust you or treat you kindly while you bear the mark, increase the difficulty of the roll by one. But all said and done, you did succeed. (laughs) Sorry, we got a bit off topic there. (laughs) You succeed in grabbing Sonder and tackling him to the ground. And you feel like your hand starts to burn just by touching him, which, I mean, he already had this kind of decay magic, but it seems to be amplified. And you can feel that symbol of the tower being burned into your hands. And you hold on just long enough for pieces to scramble in, having gotten his land legs back, and grabs the string that has all these shrunken heads on it and tear it off 
um, and he swings it around a bit and tosses it as far away from him as he can. And the shrunken head that was talking, quote unquote, the string lands on the ground, you know, a few meters away. You see the little shrunken head start rolling away, its teeth clattering as it does. And before long, unless you do something otherwise, it rolls off into the distance and around a corner. We should smash it. Yeah. Smash it. Well, you you guys can smash it because I'm already like... (laughs) Uh, No, I'm going to run after it to smash it. Okay. Yeah. So I know that demons are bad fucking news. I'm not letting any demon shit happen around here. There's the whole the whole reason I eat people is to make demons not happen. It's mm-hmm. not because we like eating people. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've seen that look in your I've, face. I've been putting myself through cannibalism for <laughs> 90 years to avoid demons. So. You don't have to like lick your fingers every time and like <laughs> well, that's smack just your of lips the sauce. and drool. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> of the sauce. No, I'm gonna run after. It. I'm gonna smash it. Yeah, me too. Okay, let's do pursuit. Okay. And we'll say occult. Okay. Okay. I'm using my poison knives. Okay. I got a nine. Yay. Yes. Success. Take no stress. So you bolt towards the shrunken head as it starts to roll away. Uh, you take one of your knives and stab it through the head and into the ground, pinning it in place. And it erupts into flame. And where you couldn't hear like the noise coming out of its mouth before, now you hear a horrible scream um, as it is consumed in flame and it turns to ash. And we'll be back in two weeks. Thank you for listening to this episode of The House of Bob. If you're enjoying the show, we'd love it if you gave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other people find the show. And tell your friends, and if you'd like to chat with us, Hit us up on social media. We're at the House of Bob on most platforms. You can also check out our Discord channel, and the links to all of that are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show financially, consider checking out our Patreon. We've got all sorts of bonus content on there. We do monthly bonus recordings like director's commentary and one shots. And I would like to extend a very special thank you to our newest patron, C. Huey. Thanks, Yay! Huey. Yay! Huey. Yay! Our work for this episode was by Jake Javix, and the music was by Duke Albert, and audio production was by Alex of Astronomic Audio. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great day. Roll on. We beat a demon. I mean, that's pretty fucking cool. We did like nothing. <laughs> nope. This was <laughs> you killed one guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just unintentionally. Uh, yeah. Indirectly. Yeah, but I you was did. like, so you didn't actually do that. <laughs> you thought I was gonna kill him? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe you would have a quest some questions for him or something, but the whole reason we talked to these guys was to get back up, right? So Yeah, that was a big yeah. part of it. How? Hmm. Okay. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Oh, okay. I won't mind. Let's wake up Saunders. <laughs> All right. And I backhand him. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's some wait, strong wait, wait. magic. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to describe her. She's an enigma. <laughs> sure. <laughs> she, she, so she has a blurry face. Um, yeah. <laughs> Constantly changing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shifting between, you know, past the people in your lives that you thought were long dead. That's yeah. scary. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and she always looks like someone who's like, she looks familiar, <laughs> but you can't quite put your finger on it. Did we go to kindergarten together? Exactly. That's that's what you question every time. So, oh, I'm cool with that. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the <Vermissian>, baby. <laughs> There ain't That's no rules. <laughs> it seems like she spends a lot of time here. Can she wear a big cloak that conceals all features? Like, yeah, like just have no idea. Yeah, it's Dan's bond. So yeah, whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> oh no, I heard some rolling. <laughs> <laughs> That's never good. <laughs> <laughs> Not when the DM does it. <laughs> What what would be an expletive like Jesus Christ in our world? Because <laughs> that's what I want to say. Uh, I can look up some old... Charnell! <laughs> Charnell! What have we done? Sweet Charnell in heaven. <laughs> I think we fucked up. No. I didn't do this. <laughs> so Ross. I think I fucked up. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> Why did you show me hell? <laughs> <laughs> Remember all the bragging you did about being able to deal with the Vermissian? <laughs> well, here we are. Yeah, that's the Vermissian. That's hell. There's a distinct difference. <laughs> that, he's got a point. <laughs>
<laughs> Jarrell, look at me. Look at me. Don't do that again. <laughs> I swear. It wasn't on purpose. Don't do that again. And the little head basically starts to roll away, cackling with its, or clitter, uh, clittering. That's definitely not the word. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not Clattering. a word. All the dick talk. Yeah, can you edit that out, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> no, clip that. <laughs> that's our promo clip. Yeah. No. I don't think demons count as a cult. That's sad. Well, that's mm. bullshit. What else would they be? <laughs> that's, that's what I had to roll against. That's straight up bullshit. And am I aiding Istrin, or do we both roll individually? I figured we were both rolling um, individually, but let's just I have don't know. one of you aid the other. Yeah. Okay. I've already rolled. Do you want me to just add another dice? Yeah, sure. And but then take it away because your arm's broken. And you're oh, trying right. to. <sighs> Okay, right. well, then I just won't roll another dice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Great. No, I insist you roll, not you. Take it away. <laughs> and then take it away. Oh, no. Oh, I should mark him off on my list of bad guys. <laughs> that are dead? Do you have, like, a kill count? <laughs> I do, in fact, have a kill count for this place. Oh. You putting, so like, notches on your belt or something? Nine well, armors, I, mean, I guess. notches in a Word document, but sure. <laughs> Belt dot doc. <laughs> how are you? How is your character keeping track, though? Uh, the, the notches in the belt, obviously. You know? Nice. Okay. She's okay. got that sweet knife that she uses to make notches, and a very fashionable one of those big fat belts that are so cool these days. Nice. 